What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now this subject needs no introduction whatsoever and I'm pretty sure everyone knows or has at least heard of the Titanic and the tragic events surrounding it. We've seen the movie where Leonardo DiCaprio was robbed of his Oscar, we've heard about the whole it wasn't the Titanic that set sail that day, it was the RMS Olympic theory, you may have seen the cartoon version of the movie, you may have even heard my heart will go on. And now I'm going to bless your YouTube feed with the top 10 scale. Titanic theories. Starting off with number 10 is the stupid mistake. Now most ships have lookouts, people that specifically just have to look into the distance to make sure the ship isn't going to hit anything, there are no obstacles in the far distance, it's basically just like a damage prevention job, but on the Titanic the lookouts were hugely disadvantaged to the point that had this mistake not occurred, the ship would not have sunk at all. Frederick Flea and Reginald Lee were the assigned lookouts for the Titanic, but they operated the whole journey with without any binoculars. The ship's second officer was fired and replaced at the last minute and he forgot to give the key to the locker that had the binoculars in it to Flea and Lee, hence they had to rely on just their eyesight the whole time and obviously that's just not very reliable, I mean our eyes can only see so far and especially at night or in foggy conditions that's as good as being blind. Now crew saw the iceberg 37 seconds before they hit it, with binoculars you bet your ass they would have seen that a lot sooner and been able to change course easily. The key was finally found in 2010 and auctioned off for a whopping $130,000. Coming in at number 9 are the bad omens. Now I don't want to say the Titanic was doomed before it even set sail, but there were some red flags, there were some foreshadowing bad omens, that's just that's all I'm saying. Now during the construction of the ship, 8 workers died, 3 of which are still unknown. We don't know their names as many of the workers weren't registered, they were just kind of there to make some extra money and the heads in charge were fine with that. Not only that, but 246 injuries were reported during her construction, so all that already happened before the ship was even done, let alone set sail. Now the day it set sail, April 10th, 1912. As she was leaving the Southampton dock, she nearly crashed into the New York that was moored nearby. As the Titanic was leaving, the ropes holding the New York snapped and so it was drifting into the Titanic's path, so crewmen on the steamliner quickly used water from the propeller to push the other ship away. So there have been deaths, there have been injuries, and it nearly crashed minutes into leaving the dock. I don't want to say doom was expected, but I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Say no more. You guys can make your own conclusions. I'm just giving you the facts, straight facts only. At number eight, we have the safety drills. Now this was actually part of one of the survivors' testimonies, but while aboard the ship, they shared that every Sunday without fail, they would have a lifeboat drill. Like without fail, rain or shine, the drill would definitely happen. And April 14th was the last Sunday before the crash, and although technically it's written down as sinking on the 14th, it actually sank at 2 a.m. on the 15th, if we're being specific, you know, if we're being nitpicky. Either way, that day, the very day of the tragedy to come, the lifeboat drill just never happened. No one knows why, maybe the captain thought the passengers had gotten the gist of it by now, I don't really know, but for some reason the drill just never happened. And it sure as it should have since it would have helped a bunch of people get onto the lifeboats quicker and faster and safer rather than the stampede that it actually was. But also that's just really suspicious, the fact it didn't happen, like why? Why on that day specifically? did it not happen. Illuminati confirmed. Filling our number 7 slot is fake news. Now when the Titanic sank, the news travelled pretty quickly since her voyage was so hyped up everywhere. Everyone knew of the Titanic, they knew what was going on, and so when she sank, journalists were eager to get on the story, but it was the wrong story. A various plethora of newspapers reported that the Titanic had indeed hit an iceberg, but not that it had sank. Most of them reported all the passengers getting into lifeboats and the steamer being towed to Halifax. The New York Times was actually the only newspaper who reported the ship to have sunk and was hated on by all the other newspapers for the inaccuracy. Even the Wall Street Journal reported that the damage was bad, but the important point is that she did not sink. Her watertight bulkheads were really watertight. I mean, were they though? It was only a full two days later that newspapers learned the truth and then they were all looking pretty freaking dumb for chiding the New York Times. Now once the ship's signal ceased after its destruction, stress calls, people started to realise that it did in fact sink. So whether it's 2019 or 1912, 1000 years seems to make no difference since there's clearly fake news circulating all the bloody time. 
It is what it is, guys. Now, at number six are the engineers. Thanks to the dedicated Scottish and British engineers aboard the ship, a lot of people were saved. The men stayed behind it and worked effortlessly until the ship actually went under. The lights on the ship didn't even go out until it was fully underwater. The men spent the whole time keeping the pumps running and the electricity going, which helped the crew aboard get the passengers on the lifeboats. They also kept the radio running, which sent out distress signals up until a few minutes before the ship was completely submerged. Merged. One of the last signals heard by the Carpathia was engine room full up to boilers full of water. Out of the 25 engineers, not a single one survived. They were the real MVPs of this whole situation. I think we can agree. Coming in at number 5 is the bathroom situation. Now aboard the Titanic there were three classes. First class that had various places to eat, they had their own gym, Turkish baths, a reading and writing room and many more amenities. Then came second class and third class and third class passengers were referred to as steerage passengers since they usually lodged below deck where the steering apparatus was located. Now four people shared a room in third class and they were provided food in a dining room which was pretty good considering most other ships would tell third class passengers to bring their own food. Each room had one basin between four people and there were only two bathtubs, as in for the whole class. Two bathtubs. There were around 700 to 1,000 third class passengers all sharing two bathtubs. Like, can you even imagine? Is that not against human rights? I feel like it is. And I doubt anyone would have been cleaning the third class bathtub. So, can you just imagine A, how dirty they would have been, and B, how long the wait would have been for your turn to use it? Like, can we just think about that for a minute? This is a big deal. Like, when I lived in dorms, there was one bathtub between one floor of my house, which was like 20 people. But there were showers as well, and no one really used the tubs anyway, other than to throw up in. But even 20 people, I was like, yeah, I'm never using that. But 700 to 1,000? Like, nah, nah, B, nah. At number four is now you see it, now you don't. Despite the Titanic being the biggest ship in the world, it somehow still took people 73 years to find its wreckage, which I don't even understand. Either way, sitting at 3,800 meters below the surface for more than 1,000 years now, according to scientists, the whole wreckage could completely disappear by 2030. Since the wreckage is so deep, the ship stayed well preserved till 1985, but deteriorated a lot after that. While the deterioration has slowed considerably, a new proteobacteria was found on the rusted parts of the ship, and tests confirmed that the bacteria could eat away the ship and erode it completely by 2030. Can you imagine? Like 50 years from now, there's gonna be no Titanic. It's gonna be one of those like small tidbit history facts that people of the future may or may not know. Not like how it is for us, like this huge event that we all know, like that's making me sad almost. Like people are just gonna forget about it. Well, oh. hmm. Contemplation, looking into the distance and dramatic eyes. <laughs> Filling our number three slot is Rhoda Mary Abbott. Rhoda was a third class passenger that was on the Titanic with her two sons, and she was the only female passenger that sank with the ship and actually survived. While it was going down, Rhoda was on the stern of the ship and was soon swept away from it. She surfaced and was able to swim to the collapsible A lifeboat and later rescued by the Carpathia, while her son sadly died at sea. But I never actually got this. Say you did go down with a ship while you're on the top deck, surely like would you not just float? And then could you not just swim to the lifeboats? But then, then again, hypothermia, so I get it. I get it. Now at number two is futility. 14 years before the Titanic set sail, the author Morgan Robertson wrote a novella called Futility about a ship sinking. That ship was called the Titan, and the whole story had eerily similar details to the Titanic. In the story, the Titan is the largest ship of its time, and so was the Titanic in reality. They were both roughly the same size, the Titanic being 25 meters longer. Both were described as unsinkable and both hit an iceberg mid-April. Both ships even carried the bare legal minimum number of lifeboats aboard despite having a ton of passengers, so there was just a lot of similarities that made you think like what? What is happening? I mean, even the names of both ships are just two letters off, for God's sake. Like, Morgan was even accused of being psychic, but he replied saying, I know what I'm writing about. That's literally all. He was an experienced seaman, and he knew his subject matter, and that's all it was. And although I believe Morgan, it's still really hella creepy. And finally, at number one are the Navrato brothers, also known as the Titanic Orphans. This one is equally sad and equally scandalous. Now, Michelle Jr. and Edmund Navrato were going through 
sort of a rough time for any three and two year old. Their parents had gotten separated in 1912 and their mum Marcel had full custody of them but would let their dad Michelle see them and have them on weekends. When she went to pick up the boys after Easter weekend she found the house empty and the boys nowhere to be found. Michelle had kidnapped the boys and boarded the Titanic in hopes of immigrating to the US and starting a new chapter with his kids and genuinely hoping his ex-wife would follow. The three came onto the ship as second class passengers with fake names, dad as Lewis M. Hoffman and the boys as Lola and Momin. When the ship was going down, Michelle put his kids in collapsible boat D and sadly did not survive the sinking. Since the boys were young and spoke no English, they couldn't identify themselves and were dubbed the Titanic orphans until their mother was finally located and she took them back into her care. They were the only children that survived the Titanic that were rescued without a parent or guardian present. Can you imagine how scary that would be? Like, I don't know how much they would have remembered at that age, but like, that's a lot. And that's it for today's video guys. Hopefully you guys didn't know most of these secrets before this video because if you did then clearly they just weren't secrets at all but well known facts. <laughs> Let me know what you thought in the comments below and honestly I think I may rewatch the movie tonight for some nostalgic <laughs> and giggles. Although it's, there's not a lot of giggles, it's just mostly cries. As always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll catch you next time. Bye.